this right here is an NZXT pre-built. And I already know what some of you are thinking. We built this channel off the blood, sweat, and tears of custom hand-built PCs. This is not that, so why do I have one? That's a great question. Uh, well, there are a few reasons why this particular pre-built is here. Obviously, NZXT wants us to show you guys what they're offering currently on their BLD site. If you want something that's hand-built, curated, that's just plug and play, there are actually quite a number of folks out there who would prefer to have their systems built for them. And yes, they'll even pay a small premium to have all of it done ahead of time. But the one caveat with this build is that it's the cheapest one in ZXT offers. That should give us a nice baseline. You kind of see where you're starting from on BLD and then you can work your way up from there if you so desire. The other catch is that this will be given away at the end of the video to someone who I know desperately needs an upgrade. It is long overdue. And despite this being, again, at the time this was assembled, the cheapest version in ZXT offers, it still leaps and bounds better than the system he has currently. So uh, yeah, let's dive into this one, shall we? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye-bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Now, I'll be honest, I, uh, I don't actually know what the specs are of this rig. And it's mainly because NZXD constantly shuffles around parts in each of their pre-builds, which I think is a good thing because it allows them to be flexible when it comes to availability and pricing, give you a better value overall. I appreciate the flexibility. Now I've never historically had an issue with NZXT packaging. So I think everything's gonna be in one piece. Oh yeah. Oh, and I forgot we got extra goodies because, uh, well, you don't wanna not have extra goodies in case you wanna add things later and the hardware is missing. So we're talking quick start guide, which is great, especially for first time users. You've got your Wi-Fi antennae, power cable, extra mounting gear in your cooler for entirely different platforms, SATA cables, that's an NVMe screw, because you wanna add an extra NVMe drive, uh, and then your case, hardware, so things like standoffs, extra screws there, and then a bunch of paperwork that you'll probably never read. So these easy packs, I, I think, I think they're called easy packs. I use them as well, and they're really great because they expand and kind of fill up all the extra space inside your case, and uh, that prevents things from getting rocked around during shipping. You guys know how bad that can be at times. So uh, as expected, very clean. Obviously the cable management looks really good. I think the folks over at NZXT kind of sort of know what they're doing. I'm not gonna lie, I noticed this power supply was sitting a bit awkwardly in text because they have an SFX unit in here with an adapter. So it's mounted correctly from the looks of it, but it's just, it's sitting a bit strange. We'll try to fix that. This might've been from shipping. And this is a good time to mention NZXT's warranty. It's good for two years and covers things like shipping damage. If it was assembled improperly, if there's some physical issue with the rig that's just bothering you and it's been like a year and all of a sudden now you care, it's still covered. So you have that to your peace of mind. That's good. It was a bit bent back here, but I think we've straightened it up now. Oh yeah, that's more like it. Not that it was a big deal to begin with. Now I will say behind the right side panel, things do look clean. Cable management wise, you can tell NZXT actually cares. One of the few pre-built companies that offer uh, more budget friendly options that don't skimp in the way of cable management. Not that it matters obviously from a performance perspective, but it's just nice to see that, you know, care and attention to detail went into this assembly. And before I get ahead of myself, the specs include a Core i5, 12400, 16 gigs of DDR4 and an RTX 3060 all in a package that costs less than a thousand dollars as of time of filming. And I have to specify that because NCXT gives you flexibility when it comes to picking and choosing components for your rig. You don't just have to stick with the cookie cutter pre-built that they offer out of the gate. You can say swap the RTX 3060 for a 3070 or swap the 12400 for a 12600K. And because I was curious, I put my personal address in here. I live in Florida and the ground shipping for me for this rig was about 50 bucks. I imagine that's gonna be pretty standard for those living in the lower 48. As for the remaining components, you'll see we have an SN570 in here. Nice to see that uh, you get an NVMe standard even in the base pre-built option. It always cracks me up when pre-builds like to forego their own products and their own builds. Case in point, the NZXT T120, right? A very slim CPU tower cooler is not here. Instead, a deep cool counterpart is, and this is mainly to keep the cost down, to keep the pre-built overall as cost effective for you as possible. And uh, that's especially important in the lower tier options. This, by the way, is called the Player 1, and you'll find things like the Player 2 and Player 3 higher up the chain. I'm also glad the motherboard in here actually fits the case in question. So it's an ATX board in an ATX case. Fantastic, because a lot of pre-builds will cheap out, especially in their lower tiers uh, when it comes to board size. You'll have empty space, and it just looks 
looks awkward. This is a UD series board, which is a slightly cheaper model from, I believe, Gigabyte, but it does have built-in Wi-Fi and it has plenty of expandability. The case is obviously NZXT's very own H5 Flow, and boy oh boy, is it airy. Last but not least, the power supply. I guess I saw this a bit earlier, but it's still a bit peculiar to me why they chose an SFX unit here. It's not gonna affect anything. In fact, these tend to be a bit more expensive than their conventional ATX, so to speak, counterparts. I'm just, I'm not sure why this is in here. I don't mind it. Again, it's not a bad thing. You get extra space, especially for cable management closer toward the front, but uh, it's just, it's kind of a strange choice. It's not, it's not something I would pick, let's say for a budget rig. That said, it's still 80 plus gold certified. It's fully modular and at 650 watts, it's more than enough for this combination of hardware, right? A 12400 and a 3060, those both sip on power compared to, well, what you could have in here. The player one then is a pretty sweet pairing of hardware, right? All around, no obvious bottlenecks, especially in the way of the graphics card or the CPU. Gaming for the most part should be fairly smooth, especially in 1080p. Even light 1440p will do, though you're definitely gonna be stretching this thing's legs if you try for any intensive 4K gaming. I would say the sweet spot's probably 1080p for this, which again is perfectly fine in around a thousand dollar rig. But what I wanna try next is pricing this out on PC Part Picker. I always try to do this with Pre-builds, whether they're sponsored videos or not, I want to show you what you can build this exact rig for today, given current pricing and availability. So uh, let's see how she does. Now, fortunately, I was able to match up most, if not all, of the products in the pre-build. I think the one exception is the Deepcool AK400. So this is a much newer tower cooler than the Deepcool unit in the pre-build, but it's around 35 bucks. You're still expected to pay somewhere around that anyway as a consumer for a tower cooler like this. The Gigabyte uh, motherboard is pretty much the same. I think it's actually the exact same motherboard, a B760. It doesn't say UD series in the title, but I matched up the uh, aesthetics, the heat sinks, and they look the same. We have the same kit of memory. Of course, we have the same CPU up top, the SN570, 500 gig. I, th I think this is the right graphics card. It's the RTX 3060 V2OC. It's a compact 3060 from ASUS. And then of course the case is the H5 Flow and the power supply. Now this was intentional. I just chose a pretty standard 80 plus gold certified ATX unit. I did not want to get an SFX unit. I think that would be a disservice to anyone building this, his or herself. It wouldn't make any sense really in a, in a full size build to opt for a more expensive SFX power supply. That's a cost I expect NZXT to eat, but not the average consumer. So that came in at around 99 bucks. Yes, power supplies are more expensive now than they were say six or 12 months ago. But the total for this build here comes out to give or take 900 USD. That is really not far off what you'd be paying for the pre-built version of this rig from NZXT's BLD website. You can see where they definitely cut a few corners, but I don't think they were unsafe corners to cut. For example, the DDR4 kit, this is a dirt cheap T-Force memory kit from Team Group. I use these all the time in budget builds. There's nothing wrong with them at all. 3200 megahertz, CL16, under 35 bucks is a pretty good price. The CPU at 150 bucks, of course, this is a bare bones Core i5, six core processor. It's just 12th gen. It's not 13th gen. That would bump the price up by about 50 bucks or more. Uh, and the CPU cooler, again, 35 bucks is nothing to really gawk at. However, NCXT definitely could have cheaped out even more here. I believe the 1200F comes with a stock cooler, but they chose to omit that in favor of something much quieter and much more efficient, frankly. The AK400 is definitely a step in the right direction. And even though what's actually in the pre-built isn't an AK400, I can tell you under load, it still sounds a lot quieter than a stock Intel cooler. The player one then doesn't seem like all that bad a gig now, does it? And that might be surprising to some of you. I know a lot of you think pre-builds out there are just, they're, they're only, reason to exist is to take advantage of the consumer, especially the consumer that doesn't have the time or the know-how to assemble a rig like this. And I've seen some pretty disgustingly priced pre-built out there. I mean, we've made videos about many of them, but in my experience, NZXT has always been very fair when it comes to their pricing. They're upfront about what their parts cost. If you want to upgrade or subtract components, you get a rig that comes with Windows 10 or 11 already installed and activated, and it's practically plug and play. To some, that's worth a heck of a lot. But in this case, it's only what, about $50 worth? That's pretty solid peace of mind if you ask me. Now there is one additional title I'm interested in testing and that's because the future owner of this rig enjoys playing it a whole lot. In fact, I actually got him into it and then I kind of bailed on him. So uh, yeah, wasn't really a good friend there, but uh, he loves it. And so that's what I want to show him next is how well this can handle that game because his old rig, ain't really cutting it anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and bring them in, shall we? 
All right, so I'm up here. <laughs> Do they know that you live in Florida? Yes, they know I live in Florida. All right, so I'm down here in Satan's ball sack of Florida. I think Greg and I both agreed that this PC may be on its last leg, so I gave my graphics card to my wife um, from this video. Why is only one fan spinning? Yeah, that's a problem. In your graphics card, is it? Well, I know that has like a zero stop function, but I feel like both should be spinning out of the gate. So that's mildly concerning. So that looks good. I mean, you're at least getting a post. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's working just fine. Yeah, so. What are you complaining about? You don't need a PC. Every once in a while though, when I say once in a while, I mean almost every time, uh -huh. I have to restart it like 10 times. Yeah, I don't know, Jacob. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, do you know what CPU is in here? I don't remember. Uh, yeah. It's like it's a, a Ryzen 5. Like a 2600 or yes, something? Is yes, yes. And then you've got a GTX 1070 Ti. Um, this bad boy's been through the ring. It looks like you've got a dead fan though. That's That that seems to be uh, an obvious issue. No, it's in the recovery window because you reset the system like six times. Maybe if I do this, it'll help. No, please do not. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, so I was gonna give you this, but I'm actually rethinking that entirely now. Dude, these G-Skill modules, holy cow. It's been so long since I've seen these. Yeah, the Sniper X modules with like the camo. That, uh, yeah, you just don't see stuff like that anymore. Design cues, they totally changed in the last five years. I think it was like 2017, 2018 when you built this for me. And uh, I used it to surf YouTube and Facebook up until about eight months ago, um, where I started using it a little bit more heavily. Hence me needing an upgrade. So look, I know you're giving this system like a really bad review but it's actually pretty good for like a starter rig um so, i mean i know plenty of people who would just be totally happy with this so you're acting a little entitled right now jacob i just it's, i gotta say it, it got the job done until you try and play sea of thieves i don't know if anyone's been playing that um but i get like 50 frames per second Dude, i think like it's these... because this fan is dead well <laughs> like it's sure. so bad like i can't it's like unplayable like, I mean, it really wow. is, even at 50 frames per second. And you're in 1080p, right? So it's not yes. like you're really stretching no. to make it work. I think it would still make for a pretty sweet uh, giveaway to somebody, maybe, you know, like a family member, someone who could use it. Um, you can, you know, do whatever you want with this after the fact, of course. But uh, I do want to get you hooked on this one because this is going to be a big step in the right direction. I know the graphics card looks freaking tiny in there. You just gotta trust it me. It really does yeah, though. I know. It you, you, really does. You gotta trust I mean, me. It'll, it'll look good. It'll look good. So if you didn't catch on earlier, his bro, game of choice- this looks like trash. Just give me a second, <laughs> Jacob. If you didn't catch on earlier, his game of choice is Sea of Thieves. And uh, well, that's the last game I wanna show you guys um, running on the Player One system from NZXT. So uh, Jacob, how are you thinking uh, it handles so far? Look at that frame rate. So much better than what, 50 you were getting before? This is phenomenal. Jacob. This is so good. Jacob, can you not be sarcastic? <laughs> I want to thank NZXT for the sponsorship. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob. Will this look better when I'm actually playing? <laughs> Holy this shit. <laughs> oh my God, this is so bad. <laughs> Are you serious? Is this really what it's going to be like? Jacob, oh this is a God. recording through a capture card. The bit rate is dog okay, All right, all right, all right, okay, all right. I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know, Greg. I think I'm going to just keep my own PC. <laughs> oh, wowzers. This is so much better. Can you oh not God. be sarcastic I, like, I don't know what to say. I'm so taken back with... um. Just the frame rates, I feel like it's a lot smoother in operations compared to my rig that was getting like, a, I don't know, like almost a quarter of the frame rate. It's definitely a big, big step up. Shout out to NZXT for sponsoring this video. Um, wait, it was NZXT. Yes, it's NZXT. Yeah, thanks. Um, Salazar Studios. Hopefully this isn't a gang sign. That is a gang wait, sign. I'm gonna have to blur it. Is, this, is that an S? Yeah, it's an S. Or is this an S? No, that's that makes you look stupid. That's, that's an, an S. S. Oh. Salazar family. Salazar studio. Studio, what was it before? When you're here, your family. Or when you're here, your family. Well, no. What the, <laughs> the <laughs> other thing? What was your name before? Yeah, so this is called the Player One. And um, oh, that's like really I said. What this name is? Yeah, well, yeah, it's just what they're. Uh, it's, it's the model. And it's basically ooh. built around a certain price point. Um, so it's got plenty of airflow up front. Looks really yeah. good. I know the card looks small. Again, that's a, it's a very 
I can see where on the surface you would think this is a much weaker card, but it's a much mm -hmm. newer card, newer technology. You can get DLSS in this. So certain titles will have DLSS capabilities. No idea what that is. Basically, you're going to milk on the NVIDIA servers to improve your frame rate at little to no cost um, oh. to your card. Um, and so that's going to be uh, handy in certain titles. And then, you know, decent cooling here with a Core i5-12400F. So, I mean, all around a better rig than what you have uh, by a pretty substantial margin, as you saw in Sea of Thieves. And uh, most importantly, in my view, it's clean. It's a clean rig. It's not disgusting. Although I imagine in about five months, it's going to look disgusting. <laughs> oh, don't it? Two. <laughs> The, the black will really sheen with all of the animal dander that's about oh to get on it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, maybe you have to bring it all the way back down here again for a deep cleaning at that point. Probably. So, uh, yeah, Jacob drove down from Atlanta. So that's why... Um, ATL fan base. I think all in all, watching um, you know some of the footage... Oh wait, no. It was me playing. Me playing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Pre-recorded footage, but from this PC. Yeah, that you so guys were I think it's going to be a huge step up for you know all of my daily needs, especially you know trying to game with Greg, who forced me to buy Sea of Thieves and then quickly decided never to play it again. I told you I'm a bad friend. <laughs> um, but I think it's going to be a huge step up um, for the price range because this is 1100, 1300. No, oh, it's only 900. See, I mean that's even better. I mean. I think with the cost that, you know, with the graphics cards coming down. Yeah, they're coming down in price. I, I, I think, you know, for somebody like me who, you know, occasionally likes to play video games, that this is a great compromise instead of stepping up to like Greg's editing rig over there that has a 4090 in it. 4080. Four, okay, 4080. <laughs> that's probably more expensive than this whole entire rig. I think like, you know, you maybe blackmail your parents on Christmas or on your birthday to get one of these. Okay, all right. From, yep, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll take over the outro for me. <laughs> yeah. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We will catch you in the next one, my good friends. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for learning. Now box this thing up and get that.